Hi, my name is EJ Massa. I've been sent a lot of grills by Air Joe. You had the first cheap grill, which was a fire hazard. You had the briefcase grill, which was surprisingly good. You had the pizza grill, which cooks pizza. The cardboard grill worked, but the food tasted like lighter fluid. And now Air Joe sent me a grill that looks like... A toaster. Wow, literally like a toaster. You have heating elements on both sides, pretty much a double side broiler. This grill is called the Ronco Ready Grill. 30 bucks online and a decent four and a half star rating. So somebody out there likes it. Ronco is the same company that made that Showtime rotisserie. And I remember those infomercials playing all the time when I was a kid. The following is a paid program brought to you by Ronco. Slide it back, turn up the window and... <laughs> Although the instructions warn, please don't take, set it, and forget it literally. Check on your Ronco Ready Grill from time to time. Oh no, too late. I took it literally. And now all of everything in my life is ashes. So the device has a hinged grill grate you shove in there. It has heat deflectors on the side that you remove and you can wash them. The grease and fat drips down into this little fat collector. There's no real settings like high, low, medium. There's just one setting which is on when you turn a ticking timer dial, which goes up to 30 minutes. And yes, it gives you a very stereotypical belding when it's done. How nice. The heating elements do get quite hot. It's very reminiscent of a broiler in an electric oven, except there's two sides. The instructions come with recommended times for a variety of cuts of meat and a few recipes, which look fine. It's about the same depth as a standard toaster, but about twice the width and height. So it takes up the same square footage as a, a, a toaster oven, which is a device you should get instead of this. But I'm gonna finish the review anyway. Plus I've been challenged by Air Joe and a note that came with the machine to make ribs in it, which, you know, isn't in the list of cuts of meat in the instructions, so I'll have to rig something up to cook them. <sighs> so I have to do it. I've been challenged. And what else am I gonna do with my time after my busy day at work, you know? Play video games? Relax? Hang out with my family? <laughs> no. I'm gonna review random garbage from Amazon that some stranger sent me, and I'm gonna do a food challenge with it. Because I'm a normal person. All right, before I jump into making ribs and, you know, light the thing on fire, because I don't know what it can do, I'm gonna see what this thing can do and I'll cook something normal, like a steak. A normal steak. And they have times in the instruction manual to help me. I was at Walmart and I saw the steak labeled as Wagyu Beef New York Strip Steak, which looked okay. It has better marbling than the select steaks at my grocery store, but it's not like a Wagyu A5 steak. It's, it's a Walmart Wagyu. So you gotta lower your expectations to, to that realm but it doesn't look bad. It looks decent, actually. So I'll stick it in a toaster and see how it goes. Seasoned all sides with my salt, pepper, garlic rub, and a little bit of Montreal steak seasoning. The instructions say to preheat for three minutes, so I did that, and it does glow hot. Then I put the steak into the hinged grate, then slid it into the toaster. This feels so wrong. I'm shooting for medium rare, and this is about an inch thick steak, so judging by the provided instructions, I'll cook it for about eight minutes. And yep, it is cooking. The drip tray is doing its job collecting all the fat and juices. Remember when you were a kid and people told you not to stick a knife into the toaster because you'd electrocute yourself and die? That's kind of how I felt when I checked the temperature with my instant read thermometer. And oh, time's up. The temp is all over the place, but it's in the 130, 140s, so I'd call that done. Maybe a little more done than I wanted. Taking it out, and while I don't see much color on it, kind of reminds me of a reverse seared steak before searing. Yeah, a disappointing looking steak for sure. Not much color on the outside, but the inside is fine. It looks a little inconsistent with some parts more done than others. Other parts are more rare, so it's not cooked evenly, but it does look cooked. There's some birds going mental outside. So, sorry about that audio. Let me try this Walmart Wagyu made in a giant toaster. It's pretty good. There's no crust. I wouldn't recommend this if you uh, wanted a nice seared steak. Um, it doesn't seem like it does that. Birds, what are you, what are you being all mental for? It's the middle of winter. So it's cooked, but it's not cooked well. 
Um, it has no pleasant characteristics. It's kind of gummy because there's no sear. Um, there's no character to it. It's just a like bare bones cooked steak. It's kind of a shame too because the steak, uh, this Wagyu steak from Walmart, ain't half bad. Now for the main challenge, making ribs in a stupid big toaster. I cut a slab of baby back ribs in half because only half can fit into this thing. Plus now I have two chances if the first one goes completely wrong. I season simply with my salt, pepper, garlic rub, paprika, and a little cayenne pepper. I'm not gonna add sugar because of how close those heating elements are to the meat. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wrap these in foil to help deflect some of the heat. I'm also gonna make a braising liquid with half a cup of apple juice, a fourth cup of apple cider vinegar, and a teaspoon of hickory liquid smoke. I'm adding this to hopefully get a little bit of a smoky taste, since I'm not barbecuing, and I need that smoky taste. And a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. I poured in that braising liquid, and then I was paranoid of leaks in this electrical device, so I wrapped in another layer of foil, and then a third layer. I did this for twofold reasons, the leak protection, and because I wanted a heat deflection, so that I could mimic that low and slow style of cooking. It did make it a fat packet, and um, well, it barely fit into this hinge grate. Warning, never do this. I do not recommend putting a giant metal pouch into a toaster. Okay, that being said, I'm gonna put a giant metal pouch into a toaster. It's a tight squeeze. Okay, yeah, it's in there. Let me say a prayer to my maker and uh, turn this on. Here's the method. I'm gonna cook this in five minute intervals with this dial, but I'm also doing an overall 45 minute timer. After the five minutes are up, I'm gonna let it rest for five minutes and then turn the dial for five minutes for more heat. I'm gonna let it rest for five minutes and then turn the dial for five more minutes. I'm doing this so that the packet doesn't get direct heat from both sides for too long and scorches the thing. Hopefully, this will mimic a more low and slow style of cooking as it heats up and cools down. After 45 minutes of doing five minute cooks and five minute rests, I took out the pouch and flipped the ribs because I was concerned the parts of the ribs that were near the mouth of the toaster were getting less heat. Then I put on another 45 minute timer. It did the same five minutes on, five minutes off routine. On the final ding, I took out the pouch, unwrapped the ribs and... <laughs> They look pretty good. They look done. They aren't overcooked and mushy. They're tender, but holding together. Great. I add some Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce and put them in the toaster for a couple more minutes to caramelize that sauce. And I gotta say, I'm kinda glad I don't have to flip them. It gets heat from both sides. And there we have it, folks. Baby back ribs made in a giant freaking toaster. And they look and feel perfect. They're actually pretty good. I think I nailed it. Wow. And I don't really get much of a smoky flavor, so maybe next time I'll use a little bit more of that that uh, hickory uh, liquid smoke. But overall, these are actually not bad. Has a good bite, falls right off the bone, but not like soupy, so did them perfectly. Wow, what a perfect device. I recommend you get it because it cooked food. I mean, it did. The only thing is, is I don't really know who this device is for. Like if you're in an apartment or just like a, a room in a house or something and you don't have access to a stove, then I'd rather get a toaster oven because at least you can, you can set the temperature to where you desire to be, you know, high or low. Things like that would have made the ribs way easier to make. And the steak, you could at least dial in the temperature. I don't know, the broilers on toaster ovens are all that good. I don't know if they you could make a sear with that broiler and you'd have to flip it on top of that. It's not on both sides. But, you know, I think you could make a fairly decent steak in the toaster oven as well. I don't like the lack of control. You kind of have to guess. And like with the steak, it also came out unevenly cooked. And if you have a real stove, you know, just learn to use a real stove. Because with this, there's a ton of cleanup with all the parts. And the manual threatens you to clean them every time or grease fires will erupt. I mean, I can make a steak with just a cast iron skillet and a stove, and the only thing I have to clean is the cast iron skillet. And you don't really have to clean them that much. And with most dishes in the oven, you just have to clean the pan that you put in the oven. So does it work? 
Yes. I mean, the food lacked character, but it worked. Is it cheap? Yes. It's cheap and it works. But can I recommend it? Never. It's just too strange. That's all I got for today, and thanks for setting that air, Joe. Do you take requests? Because I've got a few things I'd like to review. If you have time or money, you can send. Anyways, that's all for now. Until next time, bye.